Okay. <laughs> thanks, Arvind. Thanks for brief introduction. Okay, and thanks, thanks uh, first of all to everyone who joined the call. I had greatly appreciated. It's been uh, around it's your dinner time, and you guys are turned on to listen to this session. I'll make sure that you always have some takeaway from this session. Okay, and uh, I'll start with a, a a thanking note for Arvind. Arvind, thanks for organizing such a great event. Okay, and. Uh, Along with the introduction, what he told, I'm a database community builder, machine learning community builder, and I also part of the cloud and cloud data uh, Gene ML app India community, where I have a lot of topics around uh, AWS, Azure, and uh, AAML related topics. Okay, and let me go with the next today's session. We will start about the uh, ML ops. What is ML ops, and what is the what are the foundation model, large model overview? And why do we need ML ops in current scenario? Okay, and I plan for some small demo. I'll definitely walk through uh, my. I have 100% record that my session always go through the code code review and code walk through, and with the demo, and I'll follow the same show today. But we have a lot of things to cover, and if if you have any questions, please feel free to put it on a chat or please park it. I will take. I will have a, a stop by and I'll ask all answer all your questions. And it's quickly about me. I'm working currently with a large financial institution. Okay, and you can see the series of uh, talks I I taken around the Gen AI. Uh, particularly to start with the beginning of the Gen AI, and then how to use a LLM or large language model in the enterprise. And then I also given some demo on prompting and how to use the AWS Foundation model to use the playground to do this one. And I also created some. Free GitHub uh, Git links where you can play around with those demos. And I also last time I spoke about the fine tuning foundation model uh, using a SageMaker with your own data set using a Llama map too. And it's a series of events. This session I'm talking about LLM ops. Okay, how many people know about LLM ops? Okay, you can just raise your hand or press a raise a hand because I want to know audience a little bit. Okay, fantastic. Okay, we have thanks, Agni, for raising your hand. Okay, let me go through this one. Okay, see, in the current uh, trend, okay, people are a lot hearing about the generative AI, a large language model, and uh, Alexa TM teacher model, and we are hearing about Llama 2 Open AI. We are hearing a lot about the model. Okay, and I think somebody would have definitely taken some open source model and uh, tested in your lab, uh, tested in your environment. OK, or you would have been definitely consumed as uh, from any of the playground like a chat GPT or you can you would have used a SageMaker foundation model as a play playground and tried it. OK, but when come to the enterprise, right, the real value comes to understand the whole paradigm of how we are productionalized this model. OK, the large language model and bring a value out of it. OK. So how many people here from the DevOps background? Can you please uh, just click a raise hand so I can understand correlate those topics? OK, great, great. OK, fantastic. OK, so that is where uh, this all the best practices taken from. So what is a simple line I can put at DevOps is to bring efficiency to the developers to productionalize their application and, and Iterative fast if they have any bugs or new release, iterative fast. That's all okay. We may have different tools, different techniques, and of course, we have people and you need to have process and you have technology. Okay. And we have very good success story on the DevOps, which help the dev development uh, development team to personalize their application fast. The same thing was adapted by the machine learning community and they called us ML, ML Ops. Okay. So the machine learning community they started uh, uh, unlike a development, the dev DevOps cycle, the mission MLOps have a different uh, stages. We have a build model, train the model, test the model, and then deploy the model, monitor model. The whole cycle is there. Okay, and with that practice, the large language model currently you guys are using, uh, like a ChatGPT or the foundation model from the SageMaker. We are this session will give you the set of guidelines how you can approach and productionize this model. OK, so I plan to do this session three weeks back when I my last fine tune session. I announced it and after that I went and checked a blog, the blog which I sent, which is recently announced a week back. 
it's a fantastic doc. Anybody who can uh, find the time, please, I recommend them to highly read. And most of the session comes out of this doc. And thanks to the Socrates, and he could to put up such a great blog. And this is super informative. I recommend that too. We have four sections, and we are going to be touch up on four sections. One, we'll start about what is the MLOps principle. Second, we talk about what are the generative AI, uh, what is generative AI definition, and how, what is foundation model, what large language model, and what is the difference between them, and then how we can operationalize like that, those models, okay? And it can be any person or somebody could be a consumer, like you are using a chat GPT as a consumer. Somebody would have been a provider, okay? It can be your StageMaker Foundation model, okay? Some could be a fine tuner. You would have taken some open source model and applied your data size and fine tune it, okay? So you will have a, di a different uh, 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 user type for the uh, using a generative way and you everyone have a different life cycle we are going to be touch upon it and of course what are the personas involved if you have a devops team we will say we have developer we have operation we have project management we have scrum team and you have business team you have a different cycle right the same way mlops have a different personas and we are adding few more personas uh, uh, to the llm ops it's going to be touch upon highly on this at the end we will go through some small demo Thank you guys. Okay, I think I'm going backwards. Sorry. This is a, a uh, what is ML ops? Productionalize and operate the ML model efficiently. That's all. Okay. And this is a diagram I put up. If anybody interested, please feel free to go to this medium link and uh, read it. I have given the complete step by step. Okay. So when come to the enterprise, right? You your data can be scattered many places, and if you are streamlining it, it's better to have it in the same account. Let like everything, whether it is ML model or it's a large language model, it data is a key. So we're keeping the data here. You can be a raw data, it can be a process data where you can keep it in Athena, or for the processing, you would have used the EMR. So all the data related will be on a data account. And of course, you have a security account to do the security guard trials. Then comes the data science development account. Okay. This is where your data science team connect to the data source in a secured manner from their notebook environment. Notebook is like their IDE and explore the data, understand the data, and then they will find a future among it and then push it to the future store. Okay, So this is where their most of their work involved from them. This is a compute environment. As an MLOps engineer, you need to bring out good pra best practices on how they are developing the model, where they are storing their features, where they are storing their model, the model registry. So what whether the all the model, every model have a different data set information and what is the accuracy of the model, everything and what is the use case, everything will be documented in a model code. If anybody use the hugging phase, uh, or any model hub, you can see code, click on the model. There is something called model code, which talk about what is this model and what is this accuracy? What is the data set used? It will give a clear information. And the pipeline is where like our CACD pipeline we built, right? It can be a code pipeline or it can be a Jenkins pipeline. Same way here, we are using a SageMaker pipeline. What does it do is it'll take care of the complete life cycle and you can define that in a ML format or you can give it in a Python format. Okay. At the back end, what the SageMaker pipeline is using is it is using a CA CD stack or provided by the AWS. It uses the code commit to store their code and code build to do the build process, like how we do the Jenkins build and the code pipeline to completely orchestrate it. But it is completely must. You can use the SageMaker pipeline to completely read the data, train the data, process the data, deploy the model. Uh, it can be a batch processing, it can be inference, and then store that particular model to the SageMaker registry. This complete life cycle will be handled in a separate uh, account. Of course, you need to have a staging account. It can be a production account, and you have application users to consume. This is complete life cycle. I'm giving you at the high level. Anybody who are interested about uh, learning more about MLOps, feel free to ping me on a LinkedIn. I'm happy to assist. And you can read this article in a medium published. Yeah, I have given the clear instruction on it. If you have any feedback, again, you can pass through. Why are we talking about MLOps so much detail? You need to have at least high level of abstract of what is MLOps so that we can understand the LLM ops in a better manner. And what are the challenges? Like, uh, what are the, what is the challenges, high level of challenges when come to the foundation model and the large language model? 
guys can raise a hand feel free to raise a hand if you guys don't know what this foundation model i can quickly recap i don't want to talk over there okay go now okay fantastic okay see foundation model is nothing but okay you guys are consuming uh, uh, in this uh, generative ai model right uh, don't feel like i'm quoting chat gpt so much okay uh, so people would have used it so the that behind that there is a model uh, giving you the output right that is the foundation model okay that model is trained on the large amount of the data set okay and uh, deployed as an inference and you are hosting it you are consuming it okay you cannot go and change that model uh, from your uh, interface given but you can consume the model by prompting okay and the foundation model can be any model the chat gpt is kind of a singular mode model like a text model or if you are using any uh, model like a stability ai which is completely funded and running on a aws also so that model is a multimodal like you can do the test to image or it can be there is a language model by the stability AI also or there can be a if you're using open AI it can be a multimodal also we call this as a foundation model okay and it can be large language model or it can be image model so to train that large language model right you need a huge amount of the data set okay and you the data as i mentioned it can be scattered across many places it can be structured data it will be on your sql it can be unstructured data which will be on your s3 or it can be in a different corpus and to build this foundation model it need a large amount of the compute okay that's a big challenge the next challenge is model management now you build a model and there is a new data keep coming. You end up in different. You need to keep uh, building a new model for that. You need to manage the model in the model registry. And suddenly what happened? The accuracy of the model goes down. You need to roll back to the previous version. So the model version need to be managed. And of course, the model performance is more important if it should not hallucinate more like uh, you can. You cannot ask, uh, say that uh, who is the uh, of Barack Obama and you should not give you the Barack Obama is in your person. It's something completely wrong. You need to have a better performance. OK, so that is very important and apply your guardrail. It should not give any toxic information. It that should be some guardrails to be implemented and evaluate the model. OK, you may have a real data and it can give you the output data and it should not be completely different. You need to have evaluation of the model. A lot of techniques are available for a ROGE and there are other companies like a weight and bias which they are specialized in doing the evaluation of the model okay so these are the big challenges in the llm okay or uh, the foundation model operation okay? and how are we addressing that llm uh, <clears throat> when come to the llm llm ops same thing it cut across technology process and people okay so how are it can be adapted in a different manner based on the different use cases as I mentioned, MLOs we touched upon. Foundation model I have touched upon. It can be any model. It can be text to text, like how we are do using a, a model like a stable a stability foundation model for the language, or it can be ChatGPT. Image model like a stability stable diffusion I mentioned. You give a text dolphin on the moon. It give you the image which the dolphin on the moon. Okay, that can be text to image. Video. If anybody heard about the runway company which will create a video based on your prompt okay and audio there is a model called clip you can google it if you want that will create audio so the foundation model can be any different based on your use case you have to choose the right foundation model and currently we are mostly touch upon the llm ops where we are professionalizing the large language model okay we are focusing on what is the best practices to personalize a large language model of course uh, as i mentioned process and people Providers like uh, uh, if uh, SageMaker Bedrock is one of the provider, they provide the model and different foundation model the back end and you can consume as an API. You, under the Bedrock, you can use a different uh, service like a Cohere. There are different providers are there. Fine tuners. Now you guys uh, understand this model is working fine, but I want to fine tune for my data. So you can be a fine tuner. It can be a proprietary model. Or it can be open source model. We touch upon as well as very simple consumer. You're not building anything. You just consume as an API like open API. You can call it consume it. and a different adaption. As we mentioned, prompt engineering, fine tuning. Okay, based on a different context, your adaption will vary and evaluate. There are multiple ways to evaluate 
like a human feedback uh, where, where you need to manually label their value, the, check their uh, label the data based on their output and prompt manage. Every time you do the prompting, you will store the prompt a catalog and check how they how we can maintain it. As I mentioned, the toxicity, whether it bias, everything, data privacy. It's very important while you are using the model, your data should not be reused for your tra train that model and it should not use uh, saved anywhere. OK, and latency precision. These are all the things which need to be considered when we are productionizing the foundation model or the large language model. In this session, we are going to be discuss highly uh, uh, discuss about what are the steps involved. At the end of this session, uh, session, you can understand at least high level what is large language model, how we can operationalize in an efficient manner. This is a LLM journey. Anybody running the uh, large language model or uh, generative A on production in this call? Please rise up. OK, so um, what is the journey is? You pick some foundation model. Let's say I take a foundation model called uh, as a cohere, which is a one of the foundation model under the bedrock. You choose the foundation model. What do you do? You prompt like how you connect to the chat interface. You connect and give a prompt and get the output and see whether you are getting the expected output. Sometimes you will not get output. Then what do you do? You do the few shot like you give an example like uh, uh, this is uh, give a name, uh, give a translation as one input and say, please translate this word also. It's a few shot you are doing it. And one more option is it, if it is hallucinating a lot, you don't want the hallucination. You can use a rag re, uh, reinfo. Uh, it's the augmented generation where you it will you will take the text data and embed into your vector store and ask the prompt to only answer from that particular corpus data. So you are trying all those things. And you find everything I tried, but it is still I am not getting what I want. Then you take the foundation model. Not all the foundation models are fine-tuned eligible. You take the foundation model, fine-tune it. Fine-tune is nothing but you give a data set in a certain format. Guys, these are my data set. This is my example data set. I'm giving you 15,000 of the lines. Check and I'm run the compute again. The, it will take a base model and it will have a fine-tuned model and it will give you the output saying that OK, I, this is a fine tuned model. Then you can predict the, your uh, um, inference, uh, the prompt inference from the fine tuned model and see the accuracy. And RLHS uh, is the next step where you will do the human feedback loop. Like anybody use a chat GPT, you have a yes or thumbs down or thumbs up. Anybody tried it? Okay. I've tried it, but I don't know the effect of that. OK, so Sometimes you can click chat, on it. Uh, chat GPT will give a thank you note saying that yes, we'll take your feedback. Yes, what does it doing is it, you are giving a, a feedback to them. Yes, this output is good. OK, and yes, it's helpful. Uh, yes, it is not helpful based on your value. They will retrain the model. OK, we are giving additional input uh, where they will collect at the back end and retrain the model. And you tried all these options. If it nothing is working, then go with the pre-trained model where you build the model from the foundation. Like uh, it need a huge amount of the compute, large cost involved in it. Okay, so this is journey. Anybody who is trying to do the a large language model need to understand. Okay, <laughs> it's a very basic information. Uh, anybody who are, want to touch upon the generative AI on the large language model. Uh, streamline you need to learn uh, understand this okay same thing as i mentioned we have different uh, personas like uh, providers as i mentioned uh, who provide the models like a uh, uh, bedrock as an api it's still in a preview uh, if you want to discuss about open AI, they are giving us a provider okay and fine tuners that could be you or you can use a third party vendor to do the fine tuning also. They give you the provisions, OK? And in a SageMaker, you can do the fine tuning of the foundation model. I will show you that, OK? And consumer, of course, we are, most of the people are in consumer. Most of the active currently users are from this area. And this is a very expensive operation. If you are in a model business, it is a very expensive operation. There are a lot of companies uh, which is under the bedrock foundation like a Cohere, 
uh, Anthropic and Claude. Uh, what else I can say? Yeah, uh, AWS has its own foundation model, like Alexa teacher model. They have all those things. Okay. And what skills you needed? As a consumer, you don't need any much skill. Okay. You can use the API and build application. Anybody built the serverless applications using a SAM template or serverless framework or Lambda function? Anybody created a Lambda function? Okay, good. So it is very easy. Okay, you just build your Python code, and in that use case, you just need to call the uh, give a prompt and get the response as a JSON file <coughs> and store it in a DynamoDB or anything. Here we are just calling as an API where you no need any big understanding of what is a large language model. Do you just need to give us a call as an API, give us a prompt, get the output and store it as well. Okay, but if you are a fine tuned model, you need to know what is the ML model. Okay. Uh, what you need to know what is the large language model, how to use this model and what data sets I'm going to use to read fine tune the model. So you need to have domain expertise. Okay. Yes, you as a fine tuner, you need to have a ML ops experience also because you are going to retrain the model. And if you are building the model from the scratch from the NL, uh, end to end, you need to be NLP expertise and you need to be domain expertise and you need to have a good understanding about the data labeling and understand about which computer run, how, my, how are we going to run this compute cycle and the evaluation of the model. You need to have a very good understanding, deep understanding of the uh, generative AI or the large language model. So we as a, a category, uh, we end up in on these two categories, say, fine tuners and consumers where we need to have understanding about the DevOps principle, ML ops principle and LLM ops principle to be effective of uh, LL large language model operation. Okay, so how do there are multiple models available in the in, uh, online? Okay, how many people can tell three minimum? I know three models uh, large language model. Can anybody raise a hand? I, say Lama two. Falcon, Flantify. OK, so we have multiple. We have a lot of models available. How are we first? We need to understand. Are we going to use the proprietary model or its open source model? The proprietary model are so much sophisticated. They invested so much money and they have uh, make sure that their uh, model is not toxic or it's not biased. OK, but open source model nowadays it's catching up. It has a very good foundation model example is Llama 2 or Falcon recently Falcon announced a 180 billion parameter models and next one is commercial license. As I mentioned, Falcon 40 is open source, but Falcon 180 is not open source. At the same time, Llama 1 is not open source. Llama 2 is open source with the conditional saying that you should not have a uh, users more than certain numbers. I, I think 800 million. OK, so those people cannot use this model. You need to understand the license. And parameters. Parameters, nothing but you. The more iteration of the back propagation that it did to tune the weight and bias to uh, more the model have a more sophistication to understand your data. And speed, of course, you cannot ask uh, the chat interface saying that tell me about uh, India, and you should not wait for two minutes and give you output. It need to give an instant. That's where the experience comes. Okay, uh, the more speed you need to give, the high inference they need to run. That that's where the lot of uh, uh, money will be or not. And context window, okay. If you have a huge PDF file, you, if you are copying the whole PDF file and giving that output and summarize, okay, that is the place where you are giving in a context. The window we are using, right, to give you a prompt. That's a context window. Each model has a restrictive amount of window, okay. So if you are taking the last large language, big large language model opens this one like a Llama 2, it has a 4096 as a to, uh, token token is nothing but a word. So more or less you can count like a hundred token is equal to 75 words. OK, then you need to know the training set data set. There are certain format you need to use to train the uh, fine tune model and quality of the model. Of course, you need to have a good customer skill of what does your customer wanted while building the model. Based on that, you can quickly start like so you have 15 models are available, 15 K models are available. Now you understand open source or not, then you have step down. These are the three models you select. Then evaluate those three models and find out 
what is the model best model suits your business use case you may have a use case say that guys i don't want to spend more money the precision may be little bit okay latency also acceptable i want a less cost then there will be a priority of the model you can choose that's why you need to select three models out of that you can select one of the top model so this is an example like uh, as i mentioned a to one they have different model in every more provider right they have a variant of the model if you take a llama to also they have given a 7 billion parameter 13 billion parameter and 70 billion parameter because each model have fit into a different use case like cost precision latency while you are inferencing it at the same time while you are fine tuning the model so can be commercially used yes and what is the parameter yes and what is the minimum gpu instance required to print look at this one these are all heavy heavy machines which cost a lot and whether it is available as part of the bedrock bedrock is uh, offering from aws which is in a premium mode where you have multiple foundation model there is no one model to rule all you different use case different requirement you need a different model that's where you have a different model size and you can which will be hosted behind the bedrock and you can consume as an api this is context window we have just discussed like how much we needed to the context window and trained on what is the data set it's very important while you are choosing a foundation model what data set they use to train the model you need to understand this okay this is about the proprietary model i have talked about and this is about the open source the advantage of the open source is few of the model can be uh, f uh, f uh, fine tunable where you can use your own data sets and fine tune it and it can host under your environment when come to the proprietary model you have to two options you can consume as an api using a bed bedrock as a, a wrapper you can fine tune the model but your base your data will be in your place but the model will be still in the model provider account that you will not have access to that particular model okay so you can say Flantify, which is from the Google and DAI, which is the Falcon model, which I just touched upon. They recently announced 180 billion parameter. It's highly sophisticated. You can take it. And Meta, this is the old version of the Meta, the Llama 1 version. Now they have a three different six. I say six variants they have. If you want, uh, I have taken a session on the last one. You can look upon it. They have six version, three version for the base model and three uh, fine tuned chart based model. So now we understand what is a proprietary model. What is the open source model we have taken upon? Then how do we evaluate the top foundation model? OK. We need to understand uh, your use case. Everything comes on the problem, not on the model. OK, you identify your use case and does the use case provide the discrete output? OK, yes or no. OK, and it can be accuracy metrics like if you are using a metrics like a, Yes or no, you can use the precision F1 score or anything. But if it's a text output, then you need to see the cosine similarity. Uh, the dog, uh, I love the dog, okay? And the dog is my friend, pet animal. So these are the correlated activity. I love banana, then it is a different core, cosine similarity. So you need, if it is a, a text-based output, it need to have a, you can use a technical ROG to find the cosine similarity. And can we automate the process? If it is no, then you need to have a human in loop. OK, like uh, or, uh, uh, we mentioned, right? Um, you can use a ground truth, database ground truth, your output and check the output is matching to your ground truth and see whether how it is performing. And if it can be automated, then you can use your um, uh, evaluation uh, pipeline to uh, store your output and explanation explainability, all those things, uh, you can automate those things. So this is how you will example are giving an output, OK? So you are evaluating, give me the full name of uh, UK Prime Minister. It can be Rishi Sunak, OK? And you are su summarizing the text. You give a whole uh, paragraph and giving a summarize. And it is giving you the generating a story based on the snow, OK? For, so you are giving everything from the prompt catalog and you are evaluating three models, OK? It and foundation model one, foundation model two, foundation model three. Here you have a role of prompt engineer who keep all your uh, text input and storing in the prompt catalog. It can be a DynamoDB or it can be any of your NoSQL because it 
while you you need to bring all your catalog it is very much needed while you are doing the evaluation result here the answer is yes or no okay uh, the output is recession arc uh, and the labeled output you have ground truth value which is a recession arc and the output is also recession arc and the score is 1 so here this is a matrix which i am talking about before precision accuracy matrix yes or no matrix where you can have a scoring okay but if you are summarizing right uh, like a large language model to summarize or writing the story okay summarize also you can find the cosine similarity like uh, you have your data input and it summarized and see how good it is summarized based on the cosine similarity and give you what is the score and if you are creating a story then you need to have a ratings like uh, yes it's good it is not good where you have a human uh, feedback okay you have writing to write a book you are giving an input and you it given the large language model give you output you are reading the particular story and said okay it's good i'm giving a feedback for like you thumbs up thumbs down if you write it's a human feedback you are giving and why it is important you need to understand this process to evaluate the model as part of your large language model then i told about the speed precision and cost of course the foundation model is super speed and super cost and very good okay but if you want to cost effective i prefer to go with the foundation model too yeah it is speed is little bit less but the cost is okay and the feedback of the evaluation score is 4 then i find okay i am good to go with the foundation model if i say for my business i need a high accuracy then i will go with the foundation model one so as first of step you guys uh, identified the foundation model then you evaluated the foundation model then you decide which foundation model to choose based on the uh, business value as a cost like a speed precision and the cost then you made a very good application when come to the success of the chat gpt comes the way it is allowed the general users to adapt it okay you have wonderful front end and it asking a feedback okay and taking the feedback to retrain the model so at the behind you just imagine they have very good foundation model and then they whenever you clicking yes and good no like a thumbs up thumbs down they are taking as a feedback and try to fine tune the model okay and they put lot of god rails saying that if you are asking some toxic question it will not answer okay and these are the things you as a generative ai developer or prompt engineers you will help to develop the sophisticated foundation model at the back end as a front end engineer you end up in handling the single sign on and you will give a thumbs up thumbs down rating up or you can give a rating as an input and if anybody want to give a foundation fine tune model that is not available yeah it is available if anybody using want to use a, a open ai to fine tune the model you can do it now but by bedrock it by default you can uh, it is even the preview you have a option to fine tune the model okay so you can fine tune the model with your own data set you have a nice ui to upload your data set and ask the model to fine tune and give a new version of the model so everything can be done but this front end will be done by the devops and applic it done by the application developers like imagine like you building a nice ui as a chat gpt and that is done by you guys as application developer and devops help you to deploy this application at the back end you need to have this foundation model which done by the generative ai developers prompt engineer prompt tester okay now you see where we are getting to with the right okay journey of the provider as a, let's say i am running a foundation model okay what is my provider i need to have a nice front end nice back end of course i need to have a pre prod pre prod environment okay and uh, i need to host a, a model as an api whenever you are giving a prompt as a text at the back end what does it do is it call the api and when it call the api it will go and uh, Uh, use the foundation model and give you the output and if you are giving to if you are asking to fine tune the model it take your data and store the data or fine tune uh, store the data in your data store and then fine tune the model and store and give you the fine tuned model uh, as an output where the new request will go to your fine uh, fine tuned model uh, so this is a high level the data uh, the as a data engineers you give all the data stores here 
and as a as a provider what you do is you take the data and uh, you run the uh, take the data do the data processing and pre train the model uh, with from the base model and store the model into the s3 and then you host your inference okay if you want to have a human in uh, middle to validate then you can validate using your stage maker ground truth where your base data will be there and you can compare the data fine tuners okay you if you are want to fine tune the model uh, you take a, the data whatever you need to give an example of the data it can be a thousand example or it can be 10000 example then you need to select whether you are going to use a fine tune complete fine tune it's like a pre trained the model it is very expensive operation and the challenges it will lead to the catastrophic forgetting where the foundation model will learn only your data it learn the base uh, 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 model the base training which they done before so you can use a, a, a parameter efficient fine tuning like a perft and you can add adapter like a lora which only add your new data set as a one adapter and train the model still you can do the power of the model and you can use your fine tuned uh, based on your data sets okay and if you uh, want to host the model in a single uh, train the model in a single cpu you can use an option called qlora which is a quantized lora uh, what does it do is it reduces uh, uh, from the 16 bit to 8 bit or uh, 4 bit okay and it quantized it and it will train because of it quantized you can fit into the single gpu to train your large language model okay and here comes so open source when come to the open source model as i said you everything can be within your environment but uh, if you are using a proprietary model your data will be in your place but the model will be versioned if you are fine tune the model the model will be versioned from the data providers the proprietary model provider let's say example if you are taking a a, 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 a to a21 model and you you like the model you choose the model it is very fine but you want to fine tune the model you keep your data here and use the bedrock and fine tune the model the the data will be in your account particularly if it will use a vpc endpoint to secure the data traffic but make sure and the model will be use that particular data set to train the model the model won't come to your uh, account it will be still in the data the model provider account they will version it so the further call while you are making it will be access to your fine tuned model okay so when come to the proprietary model you need to understand whether it is open source or proprietary high level this is a high level um, as you see <clears throat> you need to have uh, the complete llms uh, llm ops five life cycle you have a development account you need to have a production account you need to have a pre prod pre prod account and if for fine tune you have a pipeline access to read the data fine tune the data and store it into the model registry so all those things will be done in this particular pipeline and uh, open source model can be stored in your model registry and as i said proprietary model will be in the pro provider registry and human in loop to do the manual testing whether based on your model output whether it is good or not that will be done on the pre prod environment to do this one so you now you seeing right like how we do the pre prod account we deploy the our application and test whether it is working or not same thing here we have reference architecture generative ai uh, is one area then we have a data area then the ml ml ops this is a recommended architecture by the aws but what i have shown as a first slide that i have recommended and implemented in one of the client okay so that's my best practices and this one you can see it uh, there are additional accounts will be there additional require requ uh, additional recommendations are there feel free to look at the llm ops architecture and with the bedrock you no need to worry about all those things you just worry about this llms ops everything you no need to worry about it everything will be masked by the bedrock okay so you just need to create an account in a person uh, in a bedrock and you store your data in your s3 and you can give you a use a bedrock sdk to fine tune the model and that bedrock will take that model and retrain your uh, train your uh, base model with a fine tune model and store it and version it and give you the output okay 
that is completely masked. You can use the Python SDK to do this one. Feel free to go and check on a Bedrock SDK. It's still in a preview, but you can always check it. Multiple personas involved here. Of course, you have data engineers, data owners, uh, data scientists, and ML engineers. These are all the normal ML of practice. Additionally, you will have a labeler, as I mentioned, human in loop to validate whether the model is good or not with the ground truth data and fine tune. That is, there is no fine tune in ML. ML ops, we have additional persona of the fine tuners and end users. It's very important how you are con the consumers are consuming the model, giving a feedback, and that is very important. Then you have a whole life cycle. Generative AI developers build the model from the scratch and the DevOps and app team who build the interactive chat application. And of course, prompt engineers who do the prompt and store their information, the chat catalog, prompt catalog, and use that catalog to evaluate the model it will be done by the prompt testers, okay? So this is the LLM of uh, complete life cycle, okay? You have platform administration uh, and you have a data will be there experimentation of uh, model model build and test okay and of course governance are very important okay i have rushed to the complete things okay the reason is i want to cover everything okay and i'll walk through you a little bit back about what we covered as a recap so you can touch upon so we understood the mlops principle yes good we understand why the mlops is important we productionize the model in an efficient manner and then we touched upon the generative AA operation, what is a foundation model and what, why foundation model operation is very important. And we touched upon difference between foundation model and the large language model. Then we understand the journey of the consumer as a consumer, how you need to build your application to consume like a Lambda and good chat GPT. As a provider, what are all the life cycle they involve? How do they can operationalize? And as a fine tuners, as a who will sit in between the consumers and provider and build a fine tuned model, what is your life cycle look like? And what are the different personas involved and what is their role into the LLM mobs? Okay, so hope you got some good understanding. I'm ready to take a few questions before I'm going to the demo. So earlier you talked about the FM mobs. Yes. And then you introduce LLM mobs. They are related, right? Is fine tuning the main difference between them? Yes, foundation model can be anything. It can be a image, text to image model or video model or audio model. Okay, uh, it's a gen. Okay, I, any any all the model uh, which the data set with the trainer. Let's say if you are taking a stability here, right? They trained upon the huge corpus of the image data with the labeled image data. So we call it as an image model, text to image model. Still, we call it that as a foundation model, okay? And if you are, whatever the model you are seeing, the Llama 2 or uh, the OpenAI model, these are these are all uh, large language models, okay? And if people have not heard, there's a clip model, which is an audio generated model. These we call as a foundation model. You take this model and fine tune, not all the models fine tunable, but you can fine tune based on your data set to give a uh, relevant output for you. That's the difference between the what is foundation model can be any more any more large languages model is only centered upon what is uh, about the large language model. Uh, I have a question. Can we uh, fine tune on a computer without GPU? Is it possible? We it need a we need a GPU man. OK, my my learning is we need a GPU. I explained also in my previous videos on huh? Why we need a GPU? Not all the model can be done from your laptop. Okay. Because your base model itself a large size, right? And you may end up in having your uh, new data and you are you may adding a new adapter, but you can need at least one GPU. If you have a Mac one with the one GPU, you can always try it. And with bedrock fine tuning, is it? Uh... It is in the preview. It is not. You need to subscribe. If you have a AWS account, go to the bedrock and subscribe. It is still in the preview. So if your company have a really pressing use case, AWS will be happy to enable this model under your account because it's a, it, it involves a lot of cost, right? Okay. If you are consuming as an API at the back end, they need to run a huge in crunch, okay? And you need to have valid use case to use it, okay? Okay. 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 
this is a demo i want any, to any use any resources if you can help for uh, fine tuning like if you have put any videos or resources for fine tuning it will yes uh, you can connect me on a linkedin this is my linkedin okay i have a, a youtube uh, fleet of videos along with arvind also i did couple of sessions i can share you those information okay feel free to ping this is my linkedin you seeing my screen right yeah i can okay and guys feel free to pass on your feedback i am putting on the chat if you have do we have a chat available here there is a q and a do you see an icon okay. q and a yes i'm clicking on the q and a i yeah, am giving you the pass your feedback on <laughs> this one arvind i need your feedback okay <laughs> yeah okay Okay, this is for your feedback, and you can connect me on LinkedIn. Feel free to post about this session. Some people, this session may be very novel. It's not widely sp spoke about, but eventually, like how DevOps was for ten years back, now every it's become mainstream. I won't be surprised. LLM mobs will be mainstream very soon. Okay, and good to you guys to have basic knowledge about what is LLM and what is LLM mobs. Now let 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 me come to the small demo. Okay, so in terms of time, I taken a small demo. i taken a llama model which is a chat model and i am deploying on top of stage maker it's so i taken a foundation model what am i doing is i am not fine tuning anything i am just deploying the model here these are the three version of the model available uh, llama 2 7 billion and llama 13 uh, and 70 billion so i taken a very small model even then i need a minimum of g5.2x launch gpu machine i taken the model and this model is as part of the jumpstart model amazon has a fleet of models which is as part of their jumpstart okay if anybody who worked on uh, stage maker you guys can definitely look around i can show you if you are interested <laughs> okay i can show you this foundation model which you can see they have fleet of foundation models where you can choose from this foundation yeah you can fleet of foundation model you can be a image model or it can be a, a language model the stable is an image model you can see the llama model and you can see cohere model and a so you have lead of models few model have a is open source few model is not open source how do we know models are open source or not click on the model and you will have a model card information about what is this model see this is a model okay playground environment is not available this is a model it's self deployable so i am doing the deployment of that particular model i am taking that particular model i am just need to use the sdk of jumpstart model and give the model id which is the model id i have given the top 3 you have the model id and give instance type and just to click on deploy see you see model i given predictor in the predictor i just say model card deploy it deploy the model and store the output uh, it it deploy the model as an endpoint i will show you that endpoint okay so this is how the model will be deployed i will try to put it inside okay yeah this is how the model will be deployed you see the model it's endpoint it is deployed and all the this is a container logs at the back end it will using the hugging face container uh, to the deployment and you can monitor the model based on your input and what instance you are using it will give you the information and what is how many production you have need to have multi, uh, multi model so like a different version you can have a same endpoint gpu and you can have a different uh, version of the models on the same gpu and you can call as a reference that is also very important as part of the llm ops and if you go to the uh, found the configuration of the log uh, that one so you can deploy under the vpc currently i not deployed it and this is a model package which is given by the sage maker itself and it's a foundation model which is already there as a container what we doing is we just running this jump start deploy and i deployed the model then i am what i am doing is i am getting a response look at it i am giving input what is the recipe of minus this is a token maximum token which we are talk about the context right like this output we are giving and top p and temperature is uh, tuning the output of the model and this is output you are as using asking a question assistant is giving you the information with a clear instruction this is output is come from the large language model 
it also give you how much time it taken for the CPU and wall time. So then the next example I'm given is I'm going to Paris. What are the places I need to see? And these are the three places and uh, give me some attraction about. These are the three places people told Eiffel Tower, Lorraine Museum and the Cathedral. OK, and I'm asking give me more information about only the first one. So it give you the output, but it give you more information about the Eiffel Tower. So you can you can based on your prompt design, you can give a better output. Okay, in night time it will give a lighting and it will give a spectacular view. All those information you get it. Okay. Well, third output is very simple. I am going to the Paris. What should I see? So it give you the output. Okay, so and you can have a different output. Example, I am asking give me the emoji. My kid love ice cream, so it give you the ice cream kid and it's love. So it give you a foot as an uh, emoji. Okay? So these are the various things you can do as part of the large language model. Here you just should take on the base model and deploy it. You're not fine tuning the model. You just deploy the model here. If you're using a stage maker, it is very simple. You are using a simple SDK and you can and it will be deployed as an API. See, this is the API you can see from your front end application which you build. You can use this uh, URL and to invoke the API and parse the output and give you the very good user experience. So I have touched upon the complete life cycle about what is large language model and how it can be operated. What are the things you need to consider while you're operating a large language model in enterprise and given some small example about how you can easily deploy the model using a SageMaker and uh, how you can consume it. OK, hope this session would have been useful and I'm feel free to uh, take few questions and happy to hear your feedback uh, from the URL I have posted also from the LinkedIn. Thanks guys. So does this also involve, you know, uh, video tagging semi what is that semi learning is that right? Yes, if you, everything start with that. If you're building a foundation model, you need a lot of amount spent on the labeling. If you go to the Lama to white paper, I have clearly shown the compute cost is half the money they have spent. Let's say they have spent $100. $50 is spent for the uh, compute. Another $50 is spent on cleaning and tagging and uh, the data human annotation of the data is by they spend more time. And, and I do I do see a lot of startups doing that. Uh, the labeling and all. And, uh, all of them are using AWS kind of thing, or is that you know? Have you come across any different? Kind? I cannot point out any individual company. I, I know few companies are doing it, but you can uh, in AWS you can use a SageMaker Ground Truth to do that, and you can do the automation also around it. You see, when we were talking about it, whether it is a label or not, if it is a label, how you evaluate. If you need to be not labeled, how we can create a pipeline can be automated or it can be human in loop. We were seeing that step right in the while I'm giving a session. And this automation is coming from CDK kind of thing. Yes, you can do a CDK. Yes, yes. Okay. Man, I think AWS is becoming so complex, huh? It depends on your use case, right? You can use a simple. I I I've just now given up five lines of code to deploy the model. It is easy. But when come to the enterprise and God right side, right, you need to think about a lot. I'm not saying that this is you need to do everything. OK, I'm telling these are the steps you need to think about it while you are making your decisions. OK, and more process and procedure in place will be uh, decided based on the uh, amount of uh, complicated of your models and complicated of your use case, complicated of your customer experience or the value or the value you are building on top of it. And uh, what do you see the ratio of foundation model plus you know business value work? The final whatever don't build a foundation work. model. Don't don't build a foundation model. <laughs> Use the model provided by the people. <laughs> OK, you need a lot of research. You go take all the four foundation model, which is behind the bedrock. If you go to and see the people who behind it, they are all really, really uh, living and living and breathing on the large language model. They are scientists. They have a very good academic records and they are come from the uh, deep background about this one. That's by the real value. What the foundation model if you're building from the scratch now within three months will become absolute. 
people talk about the llama and within one the llama 2 came up falcon 40 is one of the best benchmark four months back now llama 2 is the best one now the falcon 180 came so this is going to be keep coming as an application or if a consumer so you better use as a consumer as an api or take that model and uh, deploy the model and consume it okay <laughs> that's that's my take on it and uh, yeah you said there are some private models or commercial models now when the we consume model it, model what will happen you know would some part of the money go to the real uh, innovators yeah there will be a Yes, yes, the foundation model, the model providers have their pie on the money you are spending. Let's say if you're using generative AI and you are spending money $100 and uh, there will be a, that is behind the scene, what, how kind of agreement they will put it. Like if you're using open AI as an API, right? So you have a limits and after that, if you want to use more, you need to pay the, based on the amount of tokens you are using, right? Same way it happens. Fantastic. Okay, thank you. Thank you guys. I really liked your all your questions. Feel free to pass on your feedback. I'm happy to.